60 Minutes Overtime. This week on 60 Minutes, we reported on the debate over how companies like Meta, Google, and X moderate harmful content like hate speech and false medical information on their social media platforms. Some say these companies are not doing enough to combat the proliferation of this content on their platforms, but some conservatives claim these companies have colluded with the government to suppress their speech. While reporting this story, we met Sander Vanderlinden, a professor of social psychology and director of the Social Decision-Making Laboratory at Cambridge University. Vander Linden's research focuses on how people interact with misleading or false information on social media and why some end up believing things that are either half true or completely bogus. So what is misinformation? So I would say misinformation is information that's false or incorrect. But if you look at the total amount of misinformation that's entirely fabricated, it actually forms a relatively small part of people's overall media diet. The much bigger part is what we would refer to as misleading information, half-truths, biased narratives, information that's presented out of context. You're saying there's just enough truth in it to get people to believe it. Absolutely, and I think that's the dangerous part about it. So give me an example of misleading information. Yeah. So there was this headline during the pandemic that read, healthy doctor died two weeks after getting the COVID vaccine. And this was, you know, reprinted by credible outlets. It's highly misleading because it's suggesting that the doctor died because of the COVID vaccine. While of course, still to this day, there's been no evidence that the vaccine actually was the cause of death for this doctor. And this article actually went viral on Facebook. And the way it was disseminated was meant to have people question whether vaccines work or even make you sick. Absolutely. It worked. I mean, research shows that that specific headline was actually damaging to people's attitudes towards vaccination. Vander Linden's work is based on a theory called psychological inoculation. The idea is, if you understand how misinformation can manipulate you before you see it, you are less likely to believe it. So one of the ways in which you can do that is through this uh, phenomenon that we call pre-bunking. Pre-bunking, hmm, okay. Pre-bunking is all about being preemptive and protecting each other from the spread of misinformation before it takes hold and radicalizes people. And it follows the vaccine analogy exactly. By deconstructing it and refuting it in advance, people can actually build up psychological or mental antibodies so they become more resistant to misinformation in the future. Bad news, that's the name of the game? Bad news, it's a pun, it's the name of the game. Working with government agencies, public health organizations, and tech companies, Vander Linden and his team at Cambridge make videos and video games that help people identify the common traits of misinformation. You can step into the shoes of the magician for a bit and learn how to do the trick yourself so you're never gonna be duped by it again. This game called Go Viral, made with the World Health Organization, was released during the COVID-19 pandemic. Players step into the shoes of a propagandist spreading conspiracy theories about COVID-19 on a fake social media website called a false dichotomy or a false dilemma. It's These videos, which were made in collaboration with Google and shown to millions on YouTube, taught people how to spot a false dichotomy using a Star Wars film. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Anakin's claim that Obi-Wan is either with him or is his enemy is a clear case of false dichotomy. The people who watched that video, and a group who didn't, were given a quiz. The people who saw it were, on average, better at identifying these manipulation techniques. You know, you mentioned that Google came to you. Right now, those companies are the arbiters. They're the ones who either have to label something as not true or remove things from their site. I'm getting from you that they don't like being in that position. No, they really don't like being in that position. They face a lot of critiques, no matter what they do. And so this approach of not necessarily 
taking down content or moderating content, but empowering users to spot manipulation on their platforms, they were intrigued and they liked this idea. And for us, it worked too, because you know, we don't want to tell people what they need to believe. You don't want to go around and tell everyone, you need to believe this, you need to believe that. We want to empower people to see through manipulation and make up their own mind. But van der Linden told us that the current political debate on content moderation seems to have had a chilling effect on his work with social media companies. Well, unfortunately, you spend years working with social media companies, they've started to implement it, and then all of a the sudden there's this sort of chilling effect where they're not interested in, in scaling this approach at a wider level because they fear that there's going to be critiques and that users are not going to like it because of the politicization of doing anything about misinformation. I mean, we're not talking about telling people what to believe. We're not talking about moderating speech. This is the lowest hanging fruit. This is just empowering people to identify manipulation. And even that is, is you know, and to some extent controversial for them.